A limiter is essentially a compressor with over a 10 to 1 ratio. So a limiter really is no different in nature to your standard compressor. The only real difference is that the ratio is so extreme that it creates a wall where the audio cannot pass through. And it's very, very intense and you're going to get immediate gain reduction at any level. So as soon as you start feeding gain into a limiter, it's going to start reducing the level. You're going to get gain reduction. You're going to get a raise in perceived volume and a massive reduction in dynamic range. Now, the way each limiter works is slightly different. We've got a limiter in Logic, and you can use this for mastering, but the real difference between a limiter and a brick wall limiter is there's that you don't really have to have uh, too much of an output level. So the output ceiling is here on the adaptive limiter. You've got an output level. You, there's no soft knee control. There's no attack and release on, a, on most um, adaptive limiters, maximizers, or brick wall limiters. So you essentially, you've got this absolute brick wall of where the audio cannot pass. And all you need to do is drive gain into the unit. Um, you've got an input scale, a gain, and an output ceiling. And this is where they differ. You know, this isn't completely strict. This is completely strict and won't allow the audio to go over that, that uh, brick wall. So hence the name, brick wall limiting. It's completely strict. So we're going to close this limiter down. This limiter is great for tracking and for mixing. Like I say, can be used in mastering, but I would trust the adaptive limiter to do the job better just because I know it's completely strict and we're not going to get any, any overs, anything over zero dB if we set this output ceiling. And once we've done this, we can play the track back. Just in playback there, I was getting a few clips on the input. So I can turn the input down. Alternatively, we can use um, the makeup gain on the, the bus compressor we're using to reduce the level. It's all about gain structuring and making sure the gain's correct all the way through the chain. As long as we've got a few dB on the input, that's fine. Okay, so once you've got that right and we've got no clips at, say, the loudest point, we can start to pump some gain into it. Now, it's important to notice at this point the difference between this untreated channel here, which is where the audio is playing back from, and the actual master output. Have a look at these two meters here because this really displays the difference between massive reduction in dynamic range. And you can see the difference between the input and the output. This is our headroom and our dynamic range. And we've got much less headroom and much difference, much less difference between the quiet and loud parts of our track. So there's no real gain reduction in this in this limiter so we can't really see how much gain reduction is occurring and exactly how much our um, dynamic range is being reduced and how much loudness is being induced if you want to opt for something with a little bit more of a visual display the pro l from fab filter is probably a good choice um, there's so many limiters out there i'm not going to run through all of them we'd be here all day but if i induce a similar amount of gain we get a nice display and you can see the peaks that are being reduced and we can see the amount of gain reduction. We've also got a nice RMS readout here. This is our peak readout and this is our RMS readout, which is average level. And we'll be looking at what that means later and how we can use that to see how much volume is being induced. But let's just reset this and say we're getting about five dB of reduction, which is quite a lot. we're getting about minus six RMS, which is very loud. There's the difference. I'll leave that there and we'll move on to maximizers and inflators. What's the difference? We'll find out.